Tesla stock is seeing its best winning streak since January of 2021 and short sellers getting absolutely washed out of their short positions. And in fact, they haven't even started to cover on 23 billion worth of these short positions. Now, this latest rally in Tesla really has been fueled by fundamental positive catalysts. We've almost on an everyday basis been getting better and better news. And I do think the combination of this is going to lead to a short squeeze. And when you look at some of your biggest winners so far of 2023, your big tech names, think Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, these big tech players that have all went to the moon, I mean, they're at or near their all-time highs, and Tesla is really not even close to that. And what you're seeing even on the charts is very encouraging. So I want to get into all of this with you, what's been happening recently with Tesla, how high I think Tesla stock could go over the next couple of weeks here, but also you're getting more good news today which has kind of been the theme lately with Tesla. Tesla, in fact, delivered more vehicles than Neo, Xpeng, and Lee Auto last month. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. How high do you think Tesla stock is going to go? Now, before we dive into everything you guys need to know, I want to point this out. A lot of analysts are going to start to say that Tesla stock is up over 100% from its January 2023 lows, that you should take profits, that the stock is going to fall from here. Well, let me possibly be the first one to say this. Tesla should have never fell to where it fell in the first place. The demand concerns that they were seeing, it was overblown, and, I, and that's when Elon came out on their earnings report, the first earnings report of 2023, and said, we don't have a demand problem. We're not seeing a demand problem. We have two orders for every one vehicle that we can sell. So this is more or less where Tesla should have been this whole time, in my personal opinion. If, if you track this back, this would be the same level Tesla was, at, Tesla was at in December of 2020. Now, one of the things that makes me the most bullish, personally, this is my thesis that in the next three to six months, advertising is going to show a lot of promise with Tesla. And you're going to start to see a lot of orders that get placed on Tesla's order books. And then it's no longer going to be a demand concern. It's going to be a production concern. Like, can Tesla keep up with all their production? Because I know if you are someone that owns a Tesla, or if you are an investor in the stock market, you kind of know what Teslas are, right? The average person does not. Your average car buyer, Tesla's not even an option for them. It's not even a thought process, whether they think they're too expensive, whether they think they're going to get stranded on the side of the road because there's nowhere to charge them, whether they think you can't drive a Tesla when it's raining. For all of those reasons, I think a little bit of education via advertising is going to change the game for Tesla. So that's ultimately the big thing that I'm waiting for in 2023. And I think that's where you could possibly see all-time highs with Tesla, just depending how successful advertising is. Now, let's really get into what we need to talk about here in this video. Tesla stock has been, it has been green 10 days in a row. Tesla's last red day was May 24th. And on May 24th, Tesla stock was sitting at a low of $178. From that low to where we are now, Tesla stock is up 30%. Now, I indicated that I think Tesla could easily go above 250, could approach a 300. Now, just depending how many shorts do ultimately cover on short positions, the stock could go higher than that. But I like to be a little bit more conservative. And by all means, 250, 300, I think is pretty conservative. All things said and done, the last time Tesla was valued at eight times sales, the stock rallied over 700% in 2020. And that's where we are again. Now, one of the factors on a technical basis that makes me a little bit more encouraged than not is this long-term downtrending line. It's pretty clear to see you kind of bounce off this line every time you hit it. More or less, some days you would wick above and kind of close under it again. 
and you got rejected right here. You also got rejected right here. Well, not this time around. Tesla stock looks to be breaking out above this level, actually holding support the last two trading days above this line. So from my perspective here, when you break a long term, a, a long term, I mean, this is two, uh, almost two, a two year downtrend that you have been in ever since Tesla at $414.50. Once you break that on an upside move, considering you have the highest short interest numbers that you have seen in a very long time, this could just be the start. Tesla could easily return back to 300 plus per share. But obviously, let me be clear, this is not your biggest candidate for a short squeeze by any means. This is a stock that is going to be thousands of dollars per share in the future. It's a great long-term opportunity, but there is short-term opportunities, and there is a lot of ways to exploit that and to speed up your journey to financial freedom. And that's ultimately what all of this is, is for. And Tesla just happens to have a great short-term opportunity right now. Okay, so you might already know that. Now, what has happened recently with Tesla that is really the biggest driving catalyst for this stock? I would say overall, the stock was too low to begin with. That's just, that's an easy one. Another easy one is the news that we got yesterday where Tesla's, all their Model 3s now qualify for the $7,500 tax credit. And essentially how it works is you have to source all of the battery materials and the manufacturing in America to get that full tax credit. So before it was only 3,700 because they were not sourcing all of their materials from America to make their vehicles. And they worked it out with the supply chain that they in fact are. So that is going to give you some positive demand. On top of that, you've also seen Tesla raise prices a little bit recently, and that's a good signal of solid demand. And on top of that, Elon just found a new Twitter CEO. So a lot of people are saying, hey, Tesla's going to be able to, or Elon's going to be able to focus on Tesla more now, when in 2022, that was a big drag to Tesla's performance. That's one of the reasons why Tesla got so low in the first place. Now that that problem is gone, well, the stock is free to move higher. Now, some more good news that is coming out here today is this. So if we take a look at this article, it says Tesla's now in the last couple weeks of its typical late quarter push to boost deliveries. That means eyes will turn towards the latest trends in China. Fresh data from the China Passenger Car Association indicated that Tesla's tally for May of 77,796 EVs delivered was more than the combined total of Xpeng, Li Auto, and Neo, with China being a major part of the Tesla growth story. CEO Elon Musk made his uh, first trip to the nation in three years last week to meet senior Chinese officials. Musk also visited the Shanghai Gigafactory. So, that's a big number, guys. And that's another reason why Tesla stock is up today. And this data did come out today. So it's no surprise that probably going to get a good earnings report. Now, there's also been speculation. And a lot of people uh, gave me hate for this, rightfully so. In the last video, I pointed out that Tesla, uh, or Elon, I should say, uh, is, is speaking with Mongolia officials to potentially put a factory there to i believe make batteries because they do have a lot of uh the rare earth materials that you do need to make them um i was saying magnolia in the video um yeah i i got roasted rightfully so mongolia okay and that's also a a, a positive thing De development is going to be seen as a positive for Tesla, no matter where you are in the bell curve or the S curve. So uh, those are some of the biggest things that are happening currently that have happened over the last couple of days. Now, Tesla short seller losses. Back March 9th of 2023, short sellers were down $6.65 in mark-to-market losses. This is when Tesla was trading around $175 per share. 
Well, at the time, there was only about 15.75 billion in short positions on Tesla, and this is no longer the case here today. Tesla's dollar amount currently sold short sits at $22.78 billion. This is by far the highest amount that is sold short in Tesla stock in over a year. You got, I mean, last year's August levels were the were the next highest uh, in the last year, and you were only at $20 billion back then. So short sellers have lost well over $10 billion. I mean, I would estimate around $15 billion so far in 2023. And what you've seen from the short interest is a whole lot of nothing. If you take a look at the exchange reported short interest, Tesla's short interest is unchanged from April 28th to May 15th. It was 3.51% both of these official readings from the NASDAQ. So they literally have not covered at all on their short positions. And now their losses just get bigger and bigger. And there's a lot of great reasons to cover on your short position, to see Tesla stock going higher from here. So as long as the markets hold up, I don't think it's unreasonable to see Tesla stock absolutely go crazy from here. I mean, go to 300 plus dollars per share. And I think some of the options specifically, uh, you know, give you a really good risk to reward over the next month or two here. Now, What's happening in the markets is very strange. So today you got initial jobless claims that came in 28,000 jobs higher than what we were we were expecting. The worst reading since 2020, 2021. And what this kind of did is cause bond yields to fall. And bond yields falling lets technology, it lets growth stocks rally a little bit more. And that's exactly what you're seeing today with the NASDAQ going up about 1%, and the Russell 2000 is down a half percent. Now, we talked about this yesterday, but the Russell 2000 was up about 2%, and the NASDAQ was down about 1%. This was because the Bank of Canada, they had previously paused their interest rates the last three meetings, and yesterday, they raised them for the first time in three meetings. And that essentially puts pressure on technology because it started to price out some of these rate cuts that the markets were expecting by the end of this year. At one point, like two months ago, markets were expecting three to four rate cuts by the end of this year. Now you're expecting one rate cut in November and that's it. You're expecting one in November and then one in January. And the the best way you can think about this is if the Fed has to cut rates, that is bad for the economy. The economy is not in a good place if the Fed has to cut rates. So a lot of your small and mid-cap companies that you know need to see cyclical growth in the economy to do well, that like lower interest rates at the same time, they did well yesterday, and it's now the complete opposite. Companies that are uh, closely tied to the economy not doing so well here today because initial jobless claims went higher. We've seen this before. One-off reports on the initial jobless claims doesn't necessarily mean the labor market is getting weaker. We've we've seen this on the last labor report. The unemployment rate rallied three-tenths of a percent, went from 3.4% to 3.7%. And the you added 300,000 jobs. Like one bearish data point on the labor market is equally met, if not exceeded, with good news in the labor market. So it's going to be a back and forth tug of war until next week. Next week is when you're going to get CPI that comes out on Tuesday. And you're expecting basically across the board CPI to fall Besides on your core inflation month over month, you're expecting that to stay steady at 0.4%. Last month was also 0.4%. But headline inflation year over year, expecting that to fall 
uh, Two tenths of a percent from 4.9 percent to 4.7 percent. Core inflation year over year, expecting that to drop from 5.5 percent to 5.4 percent, and the headline inflation rate month over month, expecting that to fall from 0.4 percent to 0.3 percent. And whatever this data comes in as, if it's if it's hot, the Fed's going to raise rates. If it's cooling down faster than expectations, the Fed's going to pause. Currently, markets are expecting. A pause from the Fed coming at that June 14th meeting by about a 76% probability. And we'll see. I mean, this could change depending on the inflation data. But right now, that's what you're pricing in. You are expecting a rate hike, though, July 26th, 2023, with an almost 50% probability for that. So markets are all over the place here today. Another kind of not so good sign is the market breath. The NASDAQ, for the first time, we, we actually seen the breath starting to improve. And I guess you have recently a little bit more uh, over the last couple of weeks here since the start of June. You've seen a lot of your average stocks rising. And the NASDAQ has actually fallen quite a bit since uh, just even a couple days ago, which is a positive thing. If the NASDAQ comes down, largely driven by big tech names that are close to all-time highs or above all-time highs, think again, NVIDIA, Apple, Amazon, or not Amazon, uh, Microsoft, right? These guys that have already rallied a lot. Um, if they come down and the markets catch up and actually go higher, that would be an indication of a healthy market. And I don't really group Tesla in the big tech names that have rallied too much you're still down like 75% from its all-time highs. You would need to rally, in other words, 75% from here to get back to an all-time high. So these are some of the things that are currently going on here in the markets. Getting some weird price action from oil. It's been really strange today. Oil kind of fell off a cliff at one point today. And uh, you're getting some weird speculation that just... I mean, is, is, is strange. So if any clarification comes from that, I will definitely let you guys know, but there is downside pressure here on oil today, which is a positive thing overall. If we take a look at some of the option activity that we are seeing on Tesla for the next couple option expirations, you're getting uh, open interest and volume that is heavily skewed towards the positive side around 60% open interest and volume on the call side compared to about 40%, uh, volume and open interest on the put side so far on the day today you have seen 226 orders for tesla worth about 86 million dollars with a positive order value of 64 percent so ladies and gentlemen that is going to do it for this video let me know what you guys think about this information if you have information to add to this and where do you think tesla is going to go from here let me know down below in the comment section thank you for watching hit the like button all that good stuff if you want to stay up to date with this information you guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.